Let's go. Let's do this. Dan's got <clears throat> Dan's pregnant with twins. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we got a dance. Hey, Hello guys. and welcome to another Woodshop <laughs> podcast with Mike Coffee of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel oh, Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap thing. Woodworks, and oh, Peter yeah. of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. And TikTok. And TikTok. And TikTok. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 34 of Another Woodshop Podcast, a podcast so fire that they called in the fire department. Oh, Just nice. <laughs> from Rustic Brains does not. That was good. Tampa is here. What's going Pete's on? Pete's been working on that intro for three weeks. I've been planning this <laughs> for three weeks and I can find, I, I was going to share it and I couldn't. Like that was cold good. Open. What's that was going good. on, I'm man? I'm real. I'm real. He's, real. I'm He's not, not an AI. AI. <laughs> He's not an AI. He's not a bot. He's nope. not a deep fake. Yep. A Russian deep fake. <laughs> I don't know. You guys keep telling me I met him at WorkbenchCon and I don't recall any of it. Oh man. He doesn't remember. Listen, oh, before we get into anything. <laughs> what we're about, oh, you remember, anything, Dan. You remember. We gotta go over this real quick. <laughs> Dan, Dan. We were talking about WorkbenchCon and Justin was talking about WorkbenchCon. And Dan's like, You were at WorkbenchCon? <laughs> and here's a little side note. We all hung out at WorkbenchCon for two nights in a row. <laughs> and Dan just does not remember it. And here's the best so. part. We hop on the Zoom. Uh Dan and I are here. Justin joins in. It's like Dan's like, "Oh, hey, nice to finally like meet you." You know, not just like talk and chat. And I was like, "Oh yeah, me too," because like I have never actually met him. Uh, and then an hour later, I find out that these two hung out for two nights. <laughs> I found it out too. Bit. So, uh, you know really who I wish I was hanging out with though? Our patrons. Oh, smooth. Yeah, you oh, are the fire thing now. This you patron. are right now. Yeah, we are. Uh, Justin's, yeah, Justin's actually a patron. Our patron. Wait, yeah. Justin's a patron. <laughs> get out, get out right now. If you guys want to continue enjoying Hold this on. awesome content, first of all, potentially Justin's get on the real, podcast. I'm gonna strangle you face going right now. <laughs> That's because I'm talking. It's fine. <laughs> I think um, it's for me. Yeah, yeah it's if, definitely if a dumb you guys want I love your you, chance Dan. to potentially I love you too, podcast <laughs> shut up i'm trying to sell the podcast sorry all oh, right go ahead pete go ahead pete. i'm telling the patrons lies oh wait i wasn't supposed to say that uh, if you guys Shh. want your chance to get on the podcast you said the quiet uh, part out loud <laughs> <laughs> no but if you want to continue supporting the podcast and getting some great behind the scenes extra content and some more fun awesome stuff coming in the future we don't even know what it is we just know it's awesome uh make sure to support us on patreon check us out at patreon.com slash another woodshop podcast yeah and this week's only sponsor is our patrons they're That's amazing right. and we love them and thanks justin anyways guys what's on the bench throw it to someone Make yeah like uh, 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 panic panic justin, justin. Go. me yeah what's yeah. on your bench what's buddy? on the bench what have you been oh, working well, on this week uh i am finishing up a kitchen island and we're gonna start priming it tomorrow got all the drawer fronts installed got all the drawer boxes installed all the hardware installed and yeah, had a few little hiccups along the way, but worked through them. Is what it is. As Custom you do. builds. Custom builds. You do like mostly built in stuff, right? I mean, and like uh, live edge slab tables and stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, w w like honestly, we've transitioned more into doing the built in, built in cabinetry related stuff, probably mm -hmm. going on, I don't know, maybe almost two years now. Um, honestly, it's where the money is. And right. that's, that's, that's what I'm about is the money. Yeah, It's good money. I mean, yeah. that's definitely so where it's at. It's from what we found, it's a lot easier to sell somebody on a $10,000 built in versus a $10,000 walnut desk. Right. It's a little bit easier. <laughs> Jabs. <laughs> so, uh, I feel like yeah. that's an attack. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Love you, bro. <laughs> work bench con 2020 <laughs> um so yeah that's that's uh I, honestly i didn't even know that it was even like a market in this especially in this area um a good friend of mine he actually moved up to milwaukee wisconsin and his name's david bevel timber and he showed me this side and honestly i will throw him out every time i get because i owe him everything like he's totally transformed our business and the way we think the way we like 
I never, ever, ever cared about having a precision miter saw. And, you know, he showed me the advantages of having that specific tool. And, you know, he basically taught a, taught me everything that I know about the cabinetry. And I still talk to him, you know, on a weekly basis still. Whenever I'm stumped, he's the guy I call. Um, and I'm sure everyone has that specific person that, you know, they always run to or, you know, that they have them in their back pocket. But um, I'm definitely thankful that he took the time to be able to show us this side of the business because it's opened up so many different doors that I didn't even know was even possible. Obviously, the name Rustic Grain Designs, I didn't think in a million years I would be doing cabinetry related stuff. And I was kind of, honestly, I was kind of worried about that specific name. And I thought about rebranding um, right around the 10,000 follower mark. I was like, all right, before I hit 10,000, I need to either rebrand or keep the same name. And so I actually started asking clients, hey, like, what do you think when you saw, see my, or when you hear my name, does it like shout out farmhouse? Does arousal. it, sh- yeah. Does it shout out like <laughs> yeah, arousal? <laughs> does it shout out pallet wood? Nothing against pallet wood, but like there's mm, no money in that, trash. you know? Yeah. <laughs> does it shout out MDF pallets? Yeah. <laughs> Rustic MDF. So, um, and they were like, no, we love it. We love the logo. We love the name. We don't, you know, we don't think anything of it at all. You just, it's very consumer friendly. It sounds, it's a good name in terms of like, it sounds like, I think it's very consumable. I think it's a good consumable name. It's very, it's obviously it's got where you're from in there. And yeah, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good name, especially for what you're doing personally. You should do like rusting grain and sons. Cause and sons. You know, yeah. Got, bring them all on board. Choices. One of them is bounce and hop on board. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I just want I just want to hear Mike actually say my name correctly for once. I know I always say life. it wrong. It's yeah. I do too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Is it rustic grains? No, rustic design? grain. It's rustic, rustic grain, grain designs. designs. Yeah, I always say it wrong, but it's rustic grain I, designs. I think I said it right in the intro, but if you I, I I've said it, it wrong so many times in stories, and then I realize that I say them wrong, and I actually delete them and redo it. So I I catch myself, but I say it wrong all the time too. <laughs> It's okay. What a you noob. Don't, you don't count, Dan. I definitely yeah. didn't record this I don't even story. hardly like, remember you. Yeah, definitely didn't record the story like 10 times when Justin was originally going to be on the show. Mm. Kept messing it up. I still don't believe he's here. Well, because it's I'm here. Because you would, once you add on Justin from, it just screws up the whole rest of it. Mm. Like, it just, <laughs> as soon as you say Justin from, you forget what order it's in. I will make a concerted effort Thank to you. nail it from moving forward. Appreciate it. Mike of Coffee's Justin. Custom Biles. <laughs> Biles. Biles. <laughs> no, I do get it wrong every time. Oh, yep. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yep. Custom coffee I'll give you a big old, big old mouth hug when we uh, meet up again at WorkbenchCon. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Were you um, at WorkbenchCon last year? <laughs> Justin, you this, you said? this is when you can uh, continue talking about your week. Or yeah, you what else you got going on? to what? one of the other guys. Uh, that that island is a obviously a client build, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everything yeah. we do is client builds. Yeah. We don't. That's, I think that's what's a little bit unique about our channel and what makes it well. One, it's I incorporate Fallon into it. Fallon Dan, this that is my wife Fallon. She's not Jimmy one, Fallon. No, right. not Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Fallon okay. is my wife, and she's the one that sprays with the Fuji all of our pieces, all of our furniture. Um. She basically got thrown into it because I absolutely hate finishing. And I told her, look, we That's were spraying. Five kids joke. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were spraying with a, uh, a like a Graco TC Pro originally and uh, got hooked up with Fuji. Yes, they did send me the, the gun and the system. And people always ask or, you know, this was this came up in the pre-show as well about followers bringing on somebody that doesn't have a lot of followers. It honestly, it doesn't, doesn't matter. And I'm going off on a totally different tangent on this, but uh, honestly, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter about your following. Um, 
we started working with companies and this is not a weird flex or anything like that. We started working with companies at a thousand followers. There's red tools behind me. They jumped on board at a thousand followers. It's about knowing the right people being in the right place. We met the director of marketing at WorkbenchCon, the first year of WorkbenchCon. Um, it's just being in the right place. That's all it is. And knowing how to communicate effectively. For sure. Yeah. Communication's uh, a key point of it as well. But obviously these companies are investing in you. They're giving you free product. Um, and that's, that's all we've ever received from anyone. We've never been actually paid for any content or any of our product or anything like that. Um, so it's an investment like to the company and they want to be able to return. They really have to see it up front, but you have to pitch it. You have to pitch a way you're going to represent the company and you know, how you're going to gain attention to that brand itself. Um, and that's, I don't know. It's just, I think it's part of my personality and that's why we've done so well uh, with partnering with specific companies, but I won't let any company, you know, just send me anything. It has to be specific ones, but um, yeah, it doesn't matter about the following. Honestly, if you pitch them a good idea, if you have the right uh, contact with that company, then the sky's the limit. Like there is no, who cares about following? Uh, the biggest thing is, is engagement. Um, yeah. That's the biggest thing that they look at is engagement. Are you engaging with your followers? Do you answer your DMs? Do you engage on your posts? Like nobody engages better than anyone than my coffee. I mean, I always, <laughs> true. I always, always like, how in the <laughs> heck do you get 150 freaking comments on this post like it's a post it's of you trash cutting, yeah it's a post <laughs> you cutting something out on your bandsaw like are you serious like pretty sure mike dude. coffee could take a picture of his toilet and get 200 comments he Seriously. did he, but he built a rack around it yeah here's the oh, thing he did. The the <laughs> I forgot about that <laughs> the toilet the over toilet shelf yeah, yeah, yeah it's all about the bandsaw shots and getting in tight honestly mm -hmm. the tight bandsaw shots are the real winners it's like they really camera. are it's that, that expensive lens. camera. It's that can yeah that it's expensive cheapest M50. <laughs> no, it's the lens. I gotta say that that the oh that Sigma that lens is dope. Millimeter but is the best purchase I ever made. The post I did today where it's tight shot on the band. Sorry, Justin. That's that. That's that nifty fifty, dude. You gotta get that oh. nifty fifty with that speed bo speed What's booster. We'll talk about that on AJ's question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Justin. Sorry. Yeah. So it it doesn't matter the following. Mm -hmm. Um, we just we. we my personality, I'm very an aggressive person. And I, I've learned over the years because obviously this isn't my, this isn't my first business. This isn't my only income. Let's say I am also a firefighter as well. Um, I've owned th uh, two other businesses prior to this, a lawn company, which don't really get sponsors with that. But then I also have my fishing charter Craftsman. license. Um, oh, really? Actually, yeah, so I'm a captain as well. We've been dating for almost a year. What? This You're a captain? Movies. Yeah, captain. So Captain Justin. I, mean, I could have yep. just gotten married by you. I don't have to pay for the stupid wedding. Uh, no, not that type of captain. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, but I, I still as have my license. captain this boat. Because <laughs> um, we do have a fire boat at the fire department as well that I run, and I'm a mentor. So um, we I did have sponsors with the fish and charter business. So I knew how to talk to these companies and how to approach them. And it's all about the language. That's all it is. Um, so yeah, we, we primarily do cabinetry because honestly, that's where the money is. And if something else comes, I mean, honestly, we'll build anything. We've built some crazy off the wall stuff already, you know, a, swinging bed that was in the middle of a 1.5 million dollar pool for lucas lagoons like it doesn't matter if you if the client dreams it we'll build it that's basically our slogan so that's on the side of our trailer but so yeah that's um pretty much it about us very cool uh daniel you have a big bitch <laughs> thick yeah <laughs> dan What's on your bench? Oh, 
I'm sad, to re- I'm sad to report that I don't have a whole lot on my bench. I've been super slammed with. <laughs> Why are you all excited, Mike? I just don't want to hear it. I'm tired of walnut benches and walnut barn doors. Barn doors. And... <laughs> There's still a barn door on my bench, but I haven't touched it. Like a week. <laughs> Actually, I do want to know about your photography, photography stuff. You've been very quiet this week. Uh, Usually I've you, been, me and Pete talk about like 29, 30 times a day. And it's been, yeah, like I've been, I've been super slammed. I've been doing like, two sessions a night and i have a lot of editing to do and i ju- i'm just like super behind and i'm if i hold all that photography happy. equipment i could be a photographer yeah you know <laughs> if i had tiger woods clubs i could be on the pga tour it's fine by the way i just want you to know that in the show notes that i'm typing up right now i just wrote dan's got nothing dot 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 absolutely nothing comma moving on <laughs> i've been slammed with photo editing no, I uh october after october wait august what happened did caleb book you a bunch of jobs yeah she does well the weddings are done now this is like photo shoots right o- yeah october is for photographers what april is for accountants everybody and their brother and I mother remember after this conversation <laughs> <laughs> everybody in the world That's wants family about. pictures with the beautiful fall leaves and everything and it, it, it's it's good for the pocketbook but it is terrible for the shop time yeah you had like and four photo shoots one day it was like a week i had this past weekend i did nine holy total. smokes in two days yeah wow i did nine and well to be fair they are 15 minutes long i do i do i'm very quick and very efficient with these things uh these days no we know can, we talked to can, kayla yeah <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's an attack. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of photo shoots, and that's that's what I've been doing. I've been super quiet, and that's why. Makes sense. I need to get through October. I made a I made a story today saying, um, I I have I'm swimming oh, I in I, I I'm swimming in photo mincha. editing. <laughs> That's a pre-show joke. That's a little pre-show joke. It's leaking over. <laughs> we got a leaker. I was, I, anyways. I made a story today on my IG that said, uh, "I I'm swimming or drowning in photo editing. Is it Christmas yet?" And I I've had a, like several people reach out to me and go, "What's going on? What are you not going to be in the shop until Christmas?" I'm like, <laughs> well, it's kind of a joke. I should probably clarify that. I just have a lot of photo editing, and it just feels <laughs> like I'm not going to get out there until Christmas. <laughs> but it'll probably be, you know, Thanksgiving. Before I get back on there, also a joke. Thanksgiving before your oh, I was like really. Also a joke. Also Have a you joke. thought about making your jokes funny? Uh, oh, <laughs> is that a thing you can do? Ooh. Is that a thing you can do? <laughs> no, mm. I don't know. Seriously, when's yeah. your old photography stuff done? Is it just this month? Is it next weekend? This weekend? Yeah, it really. It, it's it done really... when Kayla says it's done. <laughs> <laughs> also true. <laughs> Funny that story. Campers paid off. I, I think. <laughs> did we bring this up last week where I was I talking know. about I was how? Drunk. I think I talked about how Kayla runs all the administrative yes. stuff for my. You said it every episode. Stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> do I do this every episode? Really? No, no. You just brought it up. I've heard that thirty-four times. That was. <laughs> Wait, you follow me? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> he follows coffee and he reposts all your stuff so yeah my wife does all the administrative stuff she schedules everything i just show up with a camera and edit the photos at these days so i don't even know nice. what I'm, i don't even know what i'm getting into anymore until she's like you need to be here here and here here and here and this day you have a day That's off a but very <laughs> diminutive uh impersonation of kayla i love my wife um <laughs> does she listen gosh. to the podcast no she doesn't listen to this oh, trite God uh <laughs> what was i saying yeah photography uh-huh. photography that's that's my life right now there's nothing on my bench except for the barn door that's been there all week that i haven't touched pete what's up with you oh me you ask well yeah I'll i did ask all the things i have to write down because i did not remember um <laughs> so dan and i actually have a lot in common uh we both love mike we both hate mike and uh, we both got Mark a, a, Dar- a Dios this week. Oh, gosh, you should have brought that up. No, too late, too late. You can't talk. Sh- 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 All right. Zip it. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm i in love with that sander. And I love that. Very it fits nice sander. sander with the other one. The the vibration on it. I thought the, the Daros had little vibration. The Dios is ridiculous. It's a three millimeter throw. So it's, a, it's an even smaller throw 
a vibration or oscillation, if you want to call it that. That's and what it is. It's, it's an oscillating sander. Shh, I'm speaking. Direct um, electric oscillating sander. <laughs> not not but linear. It is. Oh, that's Dio's. Oh, I get linear. it. Yeah. Not Dios. linear, though. It's not and linear. No. When oh. I got it, when I sanded for the first time, I said, I Dios mio. Because, <laughs> oh, my you can't Dios. help but make terrible jokes. <laughs> I'm here all mind. week, guys. Till the next episode. Um, Are you Polish or Spanish? Both. Depends on the night. What do you want me to do? Argez. <laughs> Not good. Capar- move on. Move on. Move on. Quick, quick, quick. Um, so <laughs> Mike's in a hurry tonight. <laughs> that, well, speaking of photography, I've actually been uh, I've been playing around with the camera again with the 16 millimeter Sigma lens that Mike Isn't recommended. Dope? Isn't it dope? It's, it's incredible. It's and so crisp. Part, I've just been snapping pictures of emma while she's doing stuff around the house Ooh, like, she's she's working, she's Zoom calls. <laughs> she looks stunning and uh she's in love with that lens too so she's like oh can we do more photo shoots i'm like yes maybe maybe i'll get other lenses too, so, so we can try them out. why are you talking about i have right jokes now? that i will not drop because <laughs> yes. she so. listens to the podcast and i want her to be on board with me getting the nifty 50 okay. um, that 50 is like 120 bucks but you do need that speed booster which is like 70 yeah, things like, like, like 300 bucks yeah, it's like total. a two hundred dollar investment. Total. As far yeah. as lenses go, that's cheap. No, that's I, nothing. I know. Yeah, I know you the. Need fo- like, tell me, you need to tell me about this Nifty Fifty if it will fit my camera or not. You have the Sony. Probably won't. Uh, you have the Panasonic Lumix. No, I won't. No, I don't know. It has to be. It's got. It's a Canon. It's dope. It's like a. It's. I guess it would be. The, on the Sony screen. has a cheap fifty millimeter lens. Is it good? Yeah. Doesn't I Sony mean, all, that all of them, all the fifties? Yeah. Sony has a Canon adapter that could potentially fit it too, but but the Panas well your yours yeah he's got a Panasonic. Sorry, we're just talking Sony. Um, <clears throat> anyways, PlayStation just came out. <laughs> PlayStation just came out. He goes, get in the Xbox. We're getting uh, thirty seventy thirty seventy. <laughs> Not the type of crowd they don't get it. This geek talk. So, I'm leaving. Aside from that, yeah. I've been in a shop. I just I had a couple of days of just like I'm working on some like pine stain they want brown wood wedding projects <laughs> and literally just boxes like little risers and i was just and it's so funny because the clients uh someone that we know and i just showed my disdain openly i was like oh pine and like oh you want it stained gross fine i'll do it like they're cool enough with it where i could just like openly say it and they don't get upset I think Justin and I were thinking of the same joke at the same time. Which is Mike. Look, Mike look, look, looks like he's taking a dump right now. <laughs> yeah, I think so maybe we, all three of us were thinking of the same joke <laughs> just, at the same time. I'll just let you guys think it, and all the listeners too. All right, uh, but yeah, I'm working on a couple little projects like that. But yesterday I had some spare time, and I worked on a bunch of uh, French cleat wall holders. But I basically just been like knocking them out for all the little things that I use all the time. I I was making originally trying to design them for tools i think i use a lot like oh maybe i'll put the sander up there and like my drill or like no i grab my like pencils and marking gauges and like stickers things like that way more than anything else so i started making them tossing them into little bins that i have and i was about to glue them up and then our wedding photographers uh dan dunlap a uh, woodworks and photography it wasn't me uh i know they they hit us up and they're like mine hey, would have been good your photos are live be nice yikes damn man <laughs> Jesus. those are phenomenal have you seen them I haven't seen them um, i actually kind of want to see them i'll send them over to you but i like the drone they, they sent the over drone the, shot yeah, was cool drone shots were so dope mm. they sent these photos over and they threw it like they made a slideshow and everything and holy crap i've never had photos that good taken of me um emma always have they seen photos. the facebook one where you're covered in carnauba oil and climbing a rock and you're totally toned <laughs> yes but that was shot on an iphone 6s plus <laughs> um so we were very excited and it, like immediately everything got dropped because we had to look at these photos and what's funny is we went to the site that they sent us the link to like look over them and it was we didn't realize it was like their grinder favorites that they chose calm down <laughs> it was our grinder account and it was uh <laughs> It was like 100 or 50 of their favorite photos. And we're like, oh, these are great. And we're like super overjoyed. And they're like, yeah, what did you guys think of this? And we're like, oh, there's more. And there was like a tab for each section of the wedding with hundreds more photos. So that was the whole night. Basically, I got nothing done. Um, the last thing is I, I'm i reorganizing my desk because my desk that I record at is is everything. It's my it's where I work for my job, my day job. Pre-sleeps. Um, 
where I sleep sometimes. The couch is right here. Me and Dan are couch buddies. Um, <laughs> so, but I also 3D print, design, record everything at this desk and I was running out of space. Everything was tossed onto this crappy little Ikea desk. So I uh, wanted to add onto it and I got a crappy little Wayfair desk to add onto the side and make- to You bought office. a desk? I just, I bought a $150- Listen, I'm this is joking, beautiful I'm top. This top is, it's face grain on it's, six I'm sides. Just joking. Just joking. Face, so grain, on six face sides. grain on six sides. You can't get Finger that from jointed. natural lumber. <laughs> but basically, that's just for the printer. So if, you, if you're watching a video, the printers are behind me. They have their own desk. That's going to be just for that and shipping. And I can actually reclaim my desk for IT stuff and recording this beautiful podcast. But basically, that's it. That's all I got done. Uh, Mike, what about you? Well... Well, uh, this week was pretty cool. I took yesterday and today off. Yesterday was my son's birthday, but he went off your day job, right? Yeah, off my day job. Um, so I was in, thank you. I took the day off my job and I was doing what I prefer doing, which is woodworking. So I was, I've got this, uh, bench build that I talked about. I finally got to dive into that this week. Um, I'm having a really, really good time building this bench and, you know, it's kind of, the added value of I'm, I'm making good money on this job too, uh, which is nice. That always helps. I mean, it, help, it really, and I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun. Like there, it's a big paid cut. material too. I'll go into that. Actually, I'll go into that and that question we have about that. But um, yeah, so the, the job is paying really well because it's from a very large company in the area. It's a, it's a retiring vice president uh, at a company. Um, but anyway, I'm really having fun. They gave me entire creative design freedom and they gave me like four pictures that they would like it to resemble. But I, the lady I'm, I'm the gal I'm dealing with, I keep sending her updates and she's just like, loves it. She loves every second oh, of it. She's awesome. following along on the Instagram now. And she, she really uh, thinks it's cool. So um, that's been really fun. And then I'm getting into the CNC stuff. I've been digging into the CNC this week, which I am, really having a lot of fun and it's also very frustrating uh just i don't it's you know it's just another it's a tool like any other in the shop well it's a tool unlike any other in the shop i guess um it's like its own like sub category kind of but there's a lot to learn um there's a lot of different ways to approach things and it's you know i get a lot of messages on how people do things and sometimes it's overwhelming because i'll get a lot of people i mean i'll i'll say oh i'm doing this and i'll get like 15 different responses of, Hey, I do it like this. And all of them make sense, you know? Um, so it's kind of just like a preference thing at that point, but I'm getting a lot of different information coming from different directions, which I do appreciate. I'm not trying to tell anyone to stop doing that. I really do appreciate the input. So uh, it's just a lot. Like I have a lot of different ways. There's a lot of ways to do things on a CNC and I'm getting a lot, I'm hearing about all of them basically every time I met mess anything up, which is also a lot, which is frustrating. I don't think I, uh, I don't think there's been a tool I've gotten that I messed up as much as I have on the CNC. <laughs> it's, it's been a real, uh, learning experience for sure. So, um, I think last weekend I broke two bits or maybe it was the weekend before I broke a couple bits and, um, but I, I got this flag design done and I actually really like it. I've actually sold a few of those flags now, which is really cool. I really appreciate the people who supported that. And I was kind of thinking about like today I was working on this bench and it's not a huge build, but it's a bigger build. And I was like, man, I really, why do I even want to focus on having these like small inventory items that I keep in my shop, like for an Etsy thing. And it's because like, I worked on that bench all today for about 10 hours and I enjoyed every second of it, but I needed to take a break. Like I like having multiple projects going on at once. I like having like a big project and then a handful of small projects because when I get hit a wall or I get frustrated with a big project, I can step away and go do something I'm really comfortable with. And it gives me a little bit of, um, I guess like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's encouragement. Cause I'm able to do something that I'm good at. Quick, <laughs> like quick I'm, wins. Yeah. It's a quick, that's perfect. Yeah. Like if I'm doing something like that's new to me, like this bench, I mean, it's an, it's, I've never done an outdoor bench, which in and of itself isn't a very complicated build and I'm not claiming it is. Um, but it's got a bunch of new stuff for me in it that I've never done before. Um, like for example, yesterday I knocked out some templates for it, for the aprons and the stretchers. They had a slight arc to them that I wanted for the design. And it's just fun. Like the CNC is really great. I was able to hop in there. I had a design in my head. 
I hopped on the CNC. I designed the file in about 15 minutes and I had them cut 15 minutes later, the templates. It's amazing. Like it's so incredible being able to do that. Uh, that is such a huge win for being able to build anything. And then um, also I built some, some carts, I guess, last weekend. Maybe, maybe we talked about it on the show last week. You I talked built, about you it. Did. I did, but like it was kind of relating to what Justin was talking about, about built-ins. I really do enjoy building carcasses and cabinets and stuff. Like it's really fun to me. I really do enjoy it. Cause it's, it's pretty straightforward. You'd say, right, Justin, I mean, it's, you're building the box for the most part, but um, <laughs> until you uh, go to no. install your perfectly square built-in into a house that someone built with. No. Just so carousel. that is, that is the biggest misconception of cabinetry is you're just building a box. Cause it's by far not even close to that. There's so many things that I think about ahead of time that especially in the design process because i design it the way i'm going to build it and as far as my reveals my reveals on my drawer fronts the reveals on my doors how i'm gonna set this cabinet into the house like pete said nothing is square in any house so you have to you have to compensate for that kind of stuff Damn, Framers you know are the worst like it is i mean I've, I've gotten a uh, pretty, pretty good at scribing, um, fillers and stuff like that. But like, that's what I thought going into cabinetry was like, Oh, I'm just building a square box and that's all it is. Hell no. <laughs> like there's no, there's so much that goes into it that you don't think about if you, if you want to provide that perfection quality, like yeah, if you're building boxes for your shop, that's another thing. That's a totally different thing. But if you're building an actual built-in that's going to go in somebody's house, they expect quality and they expect a certain standard. And it's way more in depth than just building a box for sure. I know you didn't mean it that way, but no, I didn't mean it that way. But keep going. I want, I want to hear what you're saying. I, mean, I really want to hear what you're saying. I'm listening. Yeah. I mean, that's basically it. <laughs> that's why I brought it up. But, but I mean, that's, I didn't mean it like you just get to build a box. It's, it is, ref, it's, it's really nice. The, what I meant more was the simplicity of the, the box. Like, yeah, the, not the actual, like the actual thing needs, needs a lot of work. Obviously, your reveals on your drawer fronts are different. Sometimes you don't have a reveal. reveal. Sometimes you've got a right. drawer front that's going to be covering your entire thing. Mm -hmm. I just mean the, the actual, what it, I think like, what do they say? Like 95% of woodworking is boxes. You know, it's like something like that. That's more of what I was talking about. Obviously mm -hmm. built-in work is very complicated and difficult. That's not at all what I was saying, but what I mean, like, is it's really nice to be able to get back to the basics of woodworking, which is boxes, I think is more of what mm -hmm. I was leaning towards. Obviously you can take any concept in woodworking and run with it a million miles in one direction and make it as complicated or as simple as you want. And like you said, mm -hmm. shop, shop cabinets who cares you mm. can make it whatever you want i mean those are just simple rabbits and as long as it's a square it doesn't even have to be a square because it's not even, those carts that i built didn't have to be a square because they aren't connected to another one yeah they're not they're not part of a bigger system they're individual boxes on wheels that need to hold up a disc sander who cares mm -hmm. more about the it's more about the well, I guess the word I'm looking for is back to the basics of woodworking is what I'm more of what I mean to say. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got your box, you've got your face frames, you've got these different things that are really kind of the basics of woodworking. I think what I'm trying to say is, is it's really good to build cabinets because you learn, there's so many facets of woodworking in cabinets that you mm -hmm. can take to all the other different disciplines of within woodworking. If you're going to be building other furniture, mm -hmm. if you've got like Dan's Walnut desk, how many freaking cabinets did that desk have on it, Dan? Ultimately, what, three or four? Three. But it was a desk, but it had yeah. cabinets in it. So that's my point. Like, you know, I mean, I think the only exception to the cabinet example is like live edge furniture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> live edge furniture, you take a slab and you slap some sort of, I mean, sometimes people will make a nice base for it. Like you'll see the Nakashima style, like cantilever bases or something like that. But most of the time, people are just slapping some metal legs to them for the most part. So those are kind of the exception. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're 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 sacrificing um, a box design with a ton of slab work because when you're doing live edge stuff, you have to do all this stuff with these live edge slabs. You got to clean up all the live edge part. You got to you got to debark it, clean up the live edge, get rid of all the membrane. 
you have to stabilize all the imperfections if there is any there's a whole another bunch of stuff you have to do it with it but i think with cabinets and with built-ins it's there's a lot of really just like i'm weary of saying this but pure woodworking involved in that stuff there's a lot of things in there where you're you're, you're doing a lot of different joinery i mean you could have a ra- a simple rabbit joint for the box and for the box for the drawers you could throw something nice in there as a, a dovetail you buy all your boxes right i do yes and they're all coming with dovetails if i remember straight they are yeah they're cut yeah. out on the cnc it's a place in pennsylvania no so the boxes actually come in this <laughs> and i don't know if you i know dan didn't but i know maybe mike did maybe p did but uh i went on a rant yesterday about all my stories about um you do stories <laughs> i do oh <laughs> uh, when's work vince con coming come on <laughs> um yeah so I, I went on a big rant uh and i usually i usually don't go on rants just because they don't usually produce anything but i felt like i needed to get a point across not really not really Been a there. point across but um i just it's therapy w- session yeah i just wanted i i felt like it, like somebody needed to hear this and so basically we buy all of our drawer boxes and we buy all of our door fronts and our our doors and our drawer fronts for us it works for us obviously it's going to cost a little bit more money up front but the time that i'm saving in a one-man shop i'm doing all the building there's nobody else no employees i'm the one building everything so for us, it makes the most sense to buy that stuff, especially on this island project. This island has raised panel maple doors that have a bead profile on the inside of the panel and a bead profile on the outside of the panel. I don't have shapers. Yeah, I have a router table, but like I would, ha- I would have to invest in thousands of dollars to be able to create what i just bought for 500 dollars. yeah and it just doesn't make any sense yeah so especially if it saves you a bunch of time for sure and time time is money so much yeah for sure and that was the main point that i wanted to get across is that you know obviously i didn't make everything for this project this project is fully custom wait was someone giving you flack about that oh oh, yeah and this person (laughs) I'm not going to mention the name, but this person built does cabinetry as well. I have to ask, are they from Arizona or Texas? No. Okay. <laughs> actually from Florida. The usual suspects oh. are safe. That's yeah. usually okay. <laughs> yeah. Actually from Florida, but um, they, they do a lot of cabinetry as well. So I knew of anybody, this was the person that was going to probably give me flack for it, for saying what I was saying. And um you know, the client, they had a specific vision in mind. So we drew up the, the design in SketchUp. And as we do with every project, I don't build anything without designing SketchUp. Uh, that's the program that I feel the most comfortable in. And I can whip through stuff a lot faster than, let's say, Fusion. I know you yeah. guys use Fusion. Well, it's what you're um, comfortable with. That's the most important thing. For sure. And I don't so, wear pants. Yeah. It's not comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. So we did. Uh, we did did the design, and I always make sure that they approve the design ahead of time before I actually quote it. So I'll I'll go into the, that a little bit later for one of our other questions. But basically, um, you know, th- this is a this is a fully custom design. I came up with this design based on what needs and wants that this client had. I'm putting a microwave in an island. Like you don't really see that too often, a microwave. And it's, I never even knew they even made this type of microwave before. It's like a pull out one. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I based the whole design around that microwave, but um, yeah, so I do. The point I'm trying to make is you, you don't, you have to swallow that pride that you built every little thing on this project and it kind of seemed it felt weird to me originally when I first started doing it I started buying boxes and door fronts and drawers you know drawer fronts and everything uh, about a year ago when we 
well, a year and a half ago when we built a big cherry walk-in closet, we did the math to, um, you know, if we were to buy the material to mill down the cherry to make these raised panel doors for this cherry built in, like we would be under the amount of amount of money we would have to charge the client to be able to compensate for that labor is ridiculous. So there's no way that I could have with the tools that I have without investing a lot of money into the tools built these raised panel doors for this Island at the same quality that I got for $500. You're in a so, production at, you're in a production environment for sure. Yeah. yeah. I and, mean, there's a lot of people on here who are like, Oh, look at, you know, look what I'm making. It's, um, leaning towards the hobbyist side. I mean, it's mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm starting to move into now with the CNC is there's things you're doing that are strictly, I mean, you're running a business for sure. And we're, I mean, there's people that are running businesses and you have to do the things that make the most sense for your business. And sure. if someone doesn't matter, they can pay your bills or yeah. they can go <laughs> F off. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the bottom line. So you can do whatever you want and who cares what they think. F they don't pay your bills. The, is the mindset that I had. So <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it just, um, for us, it works. Uh, you know, if we were a big production shop with, you know, five employees that we had to keep working and pay their, their salary, then it might be worth it for us to make our boxes in house. But for you're, us, you're it's, outsourcing it's it. out. it's, for sure. We, we all kind of run into that mm -hmm. at some point, got to outsource yep. part of it. You know, yep. like as soon as you start time, time is money. <laughs> you're at that point now where time is money and you can't afford to be making these things because this is the point well look let's move past this of just what's on our bench stuff and let's go on to uh the questions we, yeah we got a lot of questions this week we let's, have a lot of questions and we're like 45 minutes in so we're not going to get to all of them oh. but let's let's move through them let's go uh let's start with the patron questions here let's go to adam barnett if i hit the button whoops Hey guys, Adam from Barnett Custom Woodworks here. So uh, I've been getting into some bigger projects, you know, the, the business has kind of taken off. And so a lot of people are calling for, for custom stuff. Um, and I was wondering what you guys approach, I guess, the qualifying process. Do you talk about budget first or do you, you know, iron out the details of what they want and then say, okay, well, that table is going to be $3,000 and then they're in shock or... You know, do you just say, hey, what's your budget? And then they say $1,000 and now you're, you know, you're lowballing yourself. Or do you say, you know, maybe if you could spend two grand, you do this. Or I don't know. What's, uh, what do you consider the best way to qualify the job and then close the deal? I will take this one to get going here. Um, for me, I just give them a number just to move on because a lot of these people for in my short time dealing with it, I don't have a ton of experience, but for me, a lot of these people just are going to hear when, no matter what number you throw at them, they're just going to not take the job. It seems like they're just, they're doing it for their own fancy. They're like, Oh, I want to get a custom whatever. And then they reach out to some maker or someone who makes these things. And then they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not $120. It's, two thousand dollars okay they were never going to spend the money that was worth anyone's time to do it so i just kind of hit them with for me where i'm at i kind of find myself going oh i shouldn't have i shouldn't have charged that much for that that was not enough and i can't do that anymore because like justin just we were just saying i'm dan we we're all it's a business i need to make money i need to feel like at the end of a job i'm not struggling to pay my bills this isn't my only job so i'm going to start taking work where i feel happy with the dollar amount i've taken so um right now in the position I'm in, I want to get paid what I want to get paid because everything right now in my life is a crazy, insane, impossible balance of time. Like I can barely balance things. So if I don't have a bunch of commissions going on, I can focus on content, which I also enjoy and it works for me. So uh, I happen to have a job right now and I have two other jobs behind this one. And um, I have dollar amounts on those that I'm very happy with. And that's something I'm trying to work towards is where every time I take a job, I'm happy with the dollar amount. So if I take on a job and I'm like, I just really want the job. I'm not in the position right now where I can just take on a bunch of work because I'm very busy. So I'm in a very lucky position where I just say, this is how much I'm really going to be happy with getting this job for. And I'd give them that and they'll either go away 
or they'll say yes in 10 minutes, which is what happens on the jobs I currently have. And I'll feel like, oh, I probably could have gotten more, but that's fine. I gave them the number I was happy with and I got it. So Dan. I never, I never ask what their budget is. I don't, I don't lead with Not that. Anymore. I never do that. That, that I, to me, that just seems like you're opening a door to uh, just talk about the money and not the the project itself, yeah. and and your your sacrifice of quality. So, I always I always try to get as much information out of them as possible without talking about money right up front. Uh, I want to know exactly what kind of dimensions they want, what 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 kind of look they're going for, and then we'll talk about the things that I can do that will satisfy those needs. And then we will talk about budget. I never lead with budget. I just feel like that is just shoehorning you into something that you're just going to be unhappy with from the get go. Pete, what do you think? I, I agree with both of you. Yeah. It's it, you don't open up with the money. You, you they're coming to you because they want a project done. Uh, the budget I think is the last part of it. And you know, I, I personally, found and i found this with many other makers is like you find your value when you're finally at that point where like let's say you're making cutting boards or benches or adirondack chairs or whatever and you're over it and you're just like i don't, I don't want to do these anymore and somebody's like hey can you make me an adirondack chair and you go you know what yeah i here's the price and you throw out a, what you think is a ridiculous number turns out that's your price that's what you should have been charging this whole time because that's how many hours it takes you. That's how much the material costs. And that client goes, yeah, let's do it immediately. And you learn your value. So don't, early on, a lot of us are very happy to just say yes to jobs and at any cost. Don't, don't fall into that trap. What about you, Justin? So. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I approach it a little bit different way. So I think budget is very important. The reason is because one, I don't want to waste my time if the budget is a thousand dollars and the budget or the realistic number that this project's going to take is $10,000. So it's time that I'm wasting that isn't a real true potential client. Can I say now, something real quick though? Sure. You're doing very large built-ins that take probably multiple days of takeoff and estimating. Yes. We're talking, I mean, so for you, that makes sense. Yeah. And I get it. Like for yes. you, you can't spend three days going to someone's house and getting the price. So for you, I agree with what you're saying hundred percent. Me and Dan with what with the stuff we're typically building, we can look at something and kind of throw a number on it and be happy with it. Your stuff's ultra custom, mm -hmm. ultimately with like a table, you know, me and Dan can be like, it's got four legs, probably. It's got a top. There's probably going to be an apron or maybe not. But for you, that makes 100%. So anyway, sorry, I just wanted to interject that, but keep going. I want to hear this. Yeah, so that's where my thought process is a little bit different than some others. It just really depends on your situation and the yeah. type of work that you're doing. Obviously, the work sure. that we're doing is more, you know, you're cool. doing a project. You're not just doing yeah. a build. You've got, you've got like a project you're doing. Like this yeah. is a remodel. I mean, quote unquote, a bigger project. Um, so I like to, I like to get a budget up front. Um, basically if somebody calls and says, Hey, I want a walk-in closet. That's typically, I don't really get cutting board, you know, calls yeah. or inquiries or anything like that. The biggest, the biggest thing that I've learned transitioning into this larger scale uh, of a business is you, you got to kind of set precedence up front that, Hey, I'm not going to work with pine. I'm not going to do cutting boards. I'm not going to do, you know, the smaller stuff. If you want to potentially do the bigger projects, um, not that anything's wrong because I started there. That's where, you know, I started doing smaller projects. That's how I built up the business to where it is today. Um, but I'll kind of go very, very quickly because I know we got a lot of questions, but somebody will call and say, Hey, I want a, you know, a kitchen Island. Let's, let's say, I'll say, okay, do you have any inspiration photos? And do you have a specific budget that you would like to stay in? And 
a lot of times the quite or the response is, well, I don't know how much it's going to cost. So right off the bat, I'll say, send me your inspiration photos, send me some rough dimensions, and I'll give you an estimated range of what I think it's going to cost. I do that as well for if anything. You're, if you're comfortable with this range, then we can move forward. If you're not well, yeah, comfortable, then absolutely. we're done. We don't yeah. need to move forward at all. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste their time. So once that range is, and usually it's pretty, I mean, it's a br pretty broad range. Usually it's, you know, whatever, if it's a $10,000 job, then the range will be, you know, nine to 13,000 or something like that. So once that range is, um, or once that budget is comfortable, or once the client is comfortable with the budget, then I'll set up a design consultation. I haven't, qu that's the only quoting per se that I gave them up front is the range of what I think it's going to cost. And I always make sure I tell them, this is what I think. This is me shooting off the hip. There could be very, you know, it could be cheaper or it could be more. So I'll set up a design consultation. Never cheaper. Yeah, never cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll set up a design consultation. I won't go to somebody's house unless I'm getting money for it. I'm not going to go to somebody's house for free. I'm not a general contractor. I'm not going to go around to 15 different houses, quoting 15 different projects. If you are, if they're serious, they're going to pay for me to go to the house, do the measurements along with the measurements. We'll sit down, we'll come up with a specific design, and then I'll come back to the shop and I'll provide them with the 3d drawing. And that makes perfect sense for you. Yep. Yeah. So typically, and it, it depends on the scope of the project, but typically it's between, you know, as cheap as 350 for the consultation all the way up to, you know, it's been 700 for the walk-in closet that we're doing after this island. So it really depends on what it is. And yeah, that makes sense. So I'll draw the project. Once they approve the project, then I will use the SketchUp drawing to get all my materials. There's no hidden cost of anything. I'll, I'll uh, get all the price of the materials. And then after I get the price of the materials, then I will add typically 10 to 20% on top of that because I'm buying it at wholesale. I'm not gonna translate that savings to the client. Then after that, then I'll figure out, I do a daily rate. So my shop daily rate is, um, it's 50, I charge basically $50 an hour. So it's 400 for the day. It doesn't matter if I work two hours or if I work 10 hours. Oh, hold on. My battery's running low. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, so it doesn't matter if I work two hours or 10 hours, I'll try to figure out how many days it's going to take. So it's for two grand a week, basically is my labor. So then I'll take, uh, the price of the materials at usually I'll do 10%, 10% and then whatever my daily rate is, say it's a week, two grand. So $2,000 for materials, $2,000 for labor. And then I'll times that by 1.4, which is 40% margin. That's going to pay for my electric. That's going to pay for, pay for my wear and tear of my tools. That's going to pay All for the right. glue. That's going to pay for anything. So the labor that I put into this project, that $2,000, that's not really profit because I'm, that's labor. I need right. to get paid for my labor. So anything after the labor is paid, the shop is paid the wear and tear that is really pro profit so that's kind of how i do my process on all of my projects yep i think that's important to note that some people think that anything outside of the cost of material is a profit and it's not, no, it's not. L labor is not your time is not expendable thing it's something that has to be paid for so it's not anyway. profit it's a it's a rate paid yeah it's your so wage yeah, but let's move all on right to the next one. let's go to uh adrian's question adrian has a question about hey guys it's adrian here from hickory homestead creations again and uh my question for you this week is what is the best deal that you've gotten on wood aside from being free 
Because right now, I know walnut is at an all-time high and like oak is at an all-time low. And so right now, I can actually get walnut for $2.50 per board foot. Yep, you heard it right. So I want to know what is the best deal you guys have grabbed out there. All right. And also want to get, give you guys a kudos for getting that Merca um, sponsorship. Way to go. You guys have really gotten this podcast to grow, and that's awesome. I know, speaking for most of the followers out there, we've all learned a lot. We've all gotten some great laughs out of it, and we all appreciate what you guys are doing, and keep up the great work, and we all tune in every week for you guys. So keep it up. Thanks, Adrian. That's really nice. Justin, what's the best deal on wood you've gotten? Um, so um, if you guys don't know, I have five boys. Mm. Yes. Five boys. I did not. Five boys. Yes. I love my wife. Uh-oh. My wife Where's is Fallon. Wood? Where's this wood going? Fallon. <laughs> Dan Fallon is my Jimmy wife. Fallon? Where is this right. going? <laughs> um, so uh, my in-laws. So my mother-in-law is from Kentucky. So... My in-laws several years ago, 15 years ago, bought a house in Kentucky and it's on the lake up there. So they're basically snowbirds. They come down here for the winter, go up there for the summer. Um, So they go up there and right when the kids get out of school and they usually take some of my kids up there with them, spend the weekend or spend the summer with grandma and grandpa. So we, we usually typically drive up there and pick them up at the end of July. Well, usually when I'm up there, well, the last, last year I didn't, or this past year I didn't go because I had to stay here and build projects. But last year, um, I would take a trailer up there and I would buy wood up in Kentucky because it's so much cheaper up there than here in Florida. Mm -hmm. So I browsed the Facebook marketplace and found somebody with, they advertised as like 800 board feet of air dried walnut. I was like, Oh, sign me up. So I went and looked at it. This guy had way more than 800 feet, way more. Like literally I had to rent a U-Haul truck to be able to drive it back down because my trailer wouldn't hold it. That's dope. So well, that I beats picked my up, story. Yeah, <laughs> I picked up this walnut for two dollars a board foot. So I paid sixteen hundred dollars for this walnut, and no lie, I probably had close to two thousand board feet. I came back here to Florida and sold what I didn't want of it, and made like four grand off of it, <laughs> which paid for everything. So. That was by far the cheapest wood that I've got. $2 board wow. foot, air dried yeah. walnut. Bam, Kentucky. Dan, <laughs> I know yours. I also I also had a walnut uh, Craigslist marketplace find from a farmer up in northern Iowa. Uh, I got like 500 board feet, maybe a little bit more, and I paid 500 bucks for it. So it came to about a dollar a board foot. Crazy. And I got a ton of walnut, obviously 500 board feet. But it was it was all stuff that was like in a barn. I still have some in my shop. I got still I got some eight quarter rough sawn walnut still stashed away, and I used a bunch of it. I used a bunch of it on stuff, and I actually ended up giving a bunch of it away to a local guy here, Alan, Alan. Wickard. Yeah, he came and took a truckload home because <laughs> I was like, I just need to get the space back for my shop because I was growing. <laughs> And this walnut was like taking up so much space. I was like, just somebody take it. And he come and got it. And yeah, it was, it was a good little transaction for him, but that was, I think that was like one of those gold finds that I'll probably never, I'll never find that again. Sucks. Ever. I, that walnut was, it was primo and it was all air dried. So it had all that beautiful color, but it did have a lot of problems it, there. It was, you know, it was warped. It was bowed. It was, you know, you name it. it there was nothing straight about it. So it was walnut. It was walnut. It, <laughs> it took a lot of work. And it, it, it probably would have been a heck of a lot better if I had my Laguna eight inch jointer back then, but I didn't. So <laughs> I had to get rid of it. What about you, Mike? Would you, would you come up with? I, I get kind of lucky every once in a while. There's a lot of, 
sawyers in this area up in the foothills i'm in the foothills so there's a lot of like guys that are cutting up logs and sometimes i find deals there and there just seems to be a lot of cabinet shops in the area and they're always just like hey 100 bucks come and pick up all this wood we don't we can't use anymore oh that's so, right so my bet my best story i mean i i still take advantage of these things i take a look at the marketplace that's the only reason i go on facebook to be quite honest i only go on facebook to check the marketplace for for lumber um but it, this is like three years ago when i first got into woodworking um there was a cabinet shop closing down about 45 minutes from here and it was like 300 bucks for a car trailer full of wood i don't even know how much wood is it, it was just a ton of wood like it was tons of wood and uh i called the guy and i was like hey i'd like to come get that i was really just starting to get into woodworking i just wanted to make stuff out of it just cut up some wood and i was like i, I just can't get up there quite yet and he's like look listen <laughs> hundred bucks. I'll drive it to your house and drop off the trailer. You just unload it and tell me when it's unloaded. I was like, all right. So that's awesome. Yeah. So he ended up not driving. He ended up not driving it to my house, but I ended up going to pick up the trailer. He let, just let me take his trailer home and unload it. Just drop it on the highway. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, My marker 420. I I took it it home, unloaded all the wood (laughs) and he came back the next morning and got the empty trailer, but it was I, a I pretty mean, trustworthy been, guy right there yeah i mean everyone's pretty cool up here in the foothills it's a pretty cool area but um but yeah it was uh i, I would guess it was about 1500 board feet of of, of wood now only 50 percent of it was hardwood and of that 50 percent, maybe 40 percent of that was worth anything it was all pretty tore but i got to learn a lot of, i got to do a lot of like my first builds out of all that wood and i i had a it had a ton of alder on there and I actually really like alder. Um, it's it's actually really nice. I like working with it. It's pretty nice to work with. It smells good. It's not amazing, but it's a nice wood for the most part. Especially like for the pencils press. to me. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I've never worked with alder. I like it. It's like um, it's like a, it's kind of like cherry. They call it poor man's cherry, but I really like the stuff. It's not quite as pretty as cherry, but it's a bit more uh, consistent than cherry. It's got more of a solid color to it. It's not quite as red but it has a consistent grain and it's really straight grain. It's nice. It's it's quite a bit softer than cherry. Too. It's quite a bit softer. Yeah. Um, it's like 600, I think, or 700 on the jank. Really but, um, but, uh, but I, I got that whole thing for hundred bucks and I ended up learning a lot on there. So, and I ended up getting some pretty gnarly walnut like beams out of that thing. Uh, I think there was like 10 walnut beams. And I think all like my last, my last holiday season of, I mean, that hundred dollars paid for a bunch of tools for me in my shop and got me really going. I mean, I got from selling all the different things from last holiday season. I got my P flux one, my drum sander, my F two, my, 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 my previous table saw and my 1412 all came from stuff I sold from that trailer load that cost me a hundred bucks. So that was a pretty great little find for me, but Pete, what about you? Heck yeah. Um, my best find came from when I got my paramatic. So that all came by mistake because I had a, uh, drum sander Craigslist alert set and I had just picked <clears> one up and then one came up. It was a, uh, I remember this. max. Yeah. Like came up and I was like, Oh, I got, I got to get on that. It hit the guy up and he's like, Oh, sorry. Uh, like, no, he actually said, yeah, it's, it's available. And then I also have this Powermatic table saw, PM2000, and I have this dust collector and this and all that. I'm like, I don't have 220, but yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that drone sander. As I'm driving down there, he's like, hey, my brother-in-law actually said he wants it. I got to, I got to give it down. I'm sorry. I was like, you're kidding me, right? Like, are you, like I'm halfway to your house. It was like an hour away. And, but I said, uh, but I still want the table saw. Cause I, I decided like, all right, I'll put in 220 or I even thought like, maybe I'll put it in storage and like eventually run 220 like an idiot. Um, I get down there, I see the stable saw and then he's like, yeah, I also have all this wood here if you need it. Cause like the guy's back was like really shot. He's like, oh, I'm not doing woodworking anymore. I got all this wood. It's been sitting in the basement by the furnace. He had a, uh, it was a charcoal slash like, fu- like straight up firewood, wood heater for straight the house. Fire. Like I don't, I don't even know what they call, it, but just you would just put logs in there and it would burn for to a heat day. the house. To heat the house, yeah. It was like some one of those old systems. What that, year like, was this? It was. This is to, last year. You went to go pick this table saw from London in 1832. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the fight off Jack the Ripper. I get there and he's like, yeah, if you like, I'm also selling all of this, and it's like 
old plywood and all this crap. He's like, yeah, if you want it, you can take it all. It's like a hundred dollars, whatever. And it's all this like old plywood, whatever. And we lean this plywood away and he has 11, like 16 to eight inch, five quarter to seven quarter, not quite eight quarter, live edge cherry slabs, just like laying there. They've been drying for 30 years next to a furnace, just like the slowest kiln dried drying ever. And I got all of that wood for a hundred bucks on top of my PM2000 that I paid $550 for. (laughs) And they're still in my shop. I still have sections at a live edge slab. I have this one live edge slab that I just want to turn into a table. Just like Dan said with his walnut, it's super gnarly. It's super bent and all out of shape, but a hundred bucks to fix it. Yeah. Like, you know, 200 board feet of, of live edge cherry for a hundred bucks. I'll take it. Nice. All right, let's move on to the next one. We really got to well, move Well, we're going to jump into the giveaway, actually. Oh, yeah, Dan, let's do that. Do that giveaway. Yeah. We need to do the giveaway, guys. <laughs> uh, we are in week 20 of the Macbeth-sponsored giveaway. It's crazy. Thank you, Macbeth. Thank you so much. Hey, I, I just want to say something. That That is awesome what, has Mac, what Macbeth has done, you know, with yes, you guys saying. and it partnered up with you guys. I mean... Honestly, I, I bought a tool for Macbeth. They wouldn't have ever got my business without you guys promoting them. It that is Rusty, record that. There's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of companies, and I'm in I'm in talks with a local company here. That's good. There's a lot of companies that need to take a page and write down some notes of what Macbeth is doing because it it's insane. Uh, there's no way I would have bought the Carvex Festool Carvex. I got it from Macbeth, yep. and that's thanks to another Woodshop podcast. Yep. So kudos go. to Macbeth. Yep, they're doing. And it I'm right. here. They're kind of they're kind of great over there. We like them. Yeah, we are big fans. Rusty, hit sure. me up. Rusty, give me a girl. <laughs> give me them digits. All right. So last week we gave away the two router bits. Two bits. And by now you probably know the the get the phrase we had last week. Two bits, one giveaway. And uh that winner was drum roll because I'm looking for it. I can't remember. <laughs> Brandon Barnard of Live by the Craft, actually. Barnard. I already reached out to him. He's already responded with his information. He was super pumped. Boom. Thank you, Brandon. This week, sponsored by Macbeth, we are giving away. An Odie's super duper light nine ounce jar of finish. Nice. Their new brand. That that's their new brand, right? The super, super duper? duper just came out. Yeah. Super Heck duper. Yeah. Rusty just picked it up this week. This stuff's I really and, like it. it's nice. And oh, I'm not done. Oh. Sorry. And we're I'm giving away a Scotch Bright non-abrasive pad to go with it. And that is a $40.50 value altogether. Mm. Nice. That's yeah, cool. I'm, I actually try really like want to try that stuff. I haven't tried it yet. You've tried it, Mike, right? You yeah, like Odie it? sent me some. Yeah, I do. It's it's a you need to do at least probably two coats, maybe more with it. Um, the it one looks thing, a little thinner than the normal stuff, but it's quite a bit thinner. You know, um, I think I can't speak for the brand, but I would say they're probably trying to go for a similar application style to the Rubio. The I mean, obviously, you got to do two coats. It's a thinner product. Um, but I think the one, the not the one thing, but the thing I really liked about it was that buff in or rub in, buff off, and you're ready to start your glue up. Or you can that's just awesome. be done. I mean, that's one thing I like. I mean, you don't have to wait any amount of time. It's ready to go as soon as you buff off. Well, there you go. But you do, have to, get the second, but you do have to get the uh, second coat on there, I would think. I think you're not going to be... Uh, you guys saw that sign, that little sign my wife made yeah. for that welcome yeah. the sign. The poplar I mean, sign. The, pop, the baked poplar sign. It looked really good. So, I mean, I'm really happy with the product. Well, there you go. It looked really Sorry. good. It's a, it's a great product. Uh, it is a great product. You heard it right it. from Mike. Yeah. He <laughs> used it. You can trust Mike. Look at that beard. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> we're giving that away this week. And uh, I'm, I'm a, I was going to go with uh, Gnarly Facebook Walnut. Facebook? For the, yeah, mm. for the market. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's where you got it. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. It's not yeah, as good, good as 24,000 BTUs. 
Nah, twenty. Nobody's 000. gonna get that though. Is <laughs> Dan one from the pre-show? Dan Mensha is the name of the episode. <laughs> Sorry, <Dan Mensha. laughs> I wasn't gonna steal that this time. I stole pine quality audio that one time. I wasn't gonna do it again. So the secret code phrase this week, ladies and gentlemen, is gnarly Facebook walnut. You can do Facebook as FB. I'll allow it. Uh, <laughs> send that to us in a DM on our IG account at Another Woodshop Podcast, or. Send it in an email to another woodshop podcast at gmail.com. Thank you once again to Macbeth Hardwood. As we do every week, this is week 20. And back to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Macbeth. All right. This next question is from Matt. I already, set, my, I already set mine in. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> You're getting already getting your. your By the way, I got some bad news for you, Justin. Now that you've been a guest, you can't ever win the. Uh... What? Oh, whoa, whoa, Come whoa. On. I thought you were doing this fair. Huh? <laughs> I mean, he, he'll oh, send it's, you a sticker. It's, it's fair-ish. <laughs> All right, listen, let's get going. We're late. We're not going to get into much more questions here. This is going to be Matt Noble's question with 4 a.m. What works? Here we go. Is it 4 a.m.? Hey, guys, this is Matt from 4 a.m. So I got Nailed a question it. for you all about what to do with material left over from projects. So I'm working on a project right now, and because of the dimensions of the pieces, I'm ending up with some pretty big offcuts uh, that I just can't use for this project uh, for this client. But, um, you know, it's enough that I can make some cutting boards pretty easily. I could probably make a side table or something out of it. Um, so I'm kind of wrestling with what the right thing to do here is, you know, do I offer to make something else for the client with their material and just charge them time and, and margin? Or, you know, do I offer just to give them the material or do I just not say anything about it and uh just kind of use it to make some other things so just curious of what y'all's thoughts are on that thanks pete you're pointing to yourself a bunch so i'm gonna go to you like we all usually do anyways <laughs> so what i usually do attack. is i'm just saying you're pointing i, I just actually just really recently went through my shop and i did what mike did to dan's shop which is pulled out every single piece of uh loose under one and a quarter inch wood uh <laughs> Uh, and basically, I, I just made a bunch, uh, I think I made about 14 or 15 mini boards that are either going to be just small cutting boards or uh, bottle openers. And anytime, if I'm ever working on a project, like Dan, I think you did something similar. You worked on that walnut desk. You obviously had some walnut left over. You made a wrist rest, right? I made a few things for him, actually. Yeah, so you I made, made a wrist rest. Little... I made a few cutting boards. You made a cutting I think board there's a qualifier, well. okay. though, and I don't know if Dan wants this mention, but Dan got a pretty big bonus from them. I mean, I, I mean, there's, there's a yes. difference. I mean, But I think if, if you have, like, yeah, if you buy a little, obviously, we always want to buy a little extra material, have some left over. If I can just glue up a quick cutting board, just run it through the planer a bunch, put a chamfer on it, and sand it a bunch while I'm sanding another project, and give it to them as an extra little thing, it's, it's a nice little bow on top of the the gift that's what i think but uh, dan why don't you talk about what you've done You're, it really depends on the size of the project i feel like uh, if if i'm doing a giant walnut desk you know i'm gonna be i'm gonna be estimating more walnut than i than i probably need and that's gonna give me a lot of extra wood so i have the capability of making them a, a wrist rest or a cutting board real quick I can do that in between glue ups of like legs or bases and stuff. If I'm going to do a smaller project, like a little tiny side table or something, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not going to make them, make a them any. Yeah. I'm, maybe a coaster, but it just doesn't make much sense to me. But whenever, whenever I estimate a project or whenever I send out a, a bid on a project, I'm always adding extra material just so I have that extra material on hand in the future. So I don't, I don't always give an extra something to a client unless it's like a bigger project. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Let's be honest here. I, I got a, a decent paycheck from the Walnut desk. So yeah, I, I have no problem giving those clients a, a, some extra bonus. And I know that those people are going to give me more work in the future. So Mike, what do you say? Uh, no, I don't. It really, can, but it does depend on the project. There's a lot of different variables. So um, if they agreed to the price, uh, then they agreed to the price and whatever's left over is yours. Is yeah. My opinion. Yes. Um, you know, um, I don't know that they're, you don't know what they're going to want. I think it's a case by case though. I'm doing this bench build and they provided all the wood and um, 
it's kind of a weird situation. I've never had a, I, we grabbed Dan and Pete were there when he picked up the wood. Uh, I grabbed Let's the boot clarify. Up. I loaded everything. Dan watched me and Pete load everything and it was very heavy. Um, so, <laughs> but there was, we, I grabbed, I purposely grabbed a lot of wood because I didn't know what shape it would be in. And we were kind of in a hurry to get out of there. And I'm glad I did because a lot of this redwood is real knotty um, and not like fun in the bedroom, but like, it's got a lot of knots in it and it's kind of just got problems where if I, I ran an arc over some of it and there were knots in the wood that weren't visible on either sides of the face. So when I actually ran the arc, a knot fell out that well, I couldn't see. <laughs> oh, wow. Before, and it wasn't visible at all. So um, the wood was not stable. I had to throw that piece of wood out because it wasn't going to be stable anymore for what I needed it for. It was a load bearing apron and I needed it to oh, be stronger yeah. than that. So anyway, the bottom line is we grabbed a bunch of extra wood because they didn't I didn't actually have money in this job for materials. I am going to tell them, Hey, I have this wood. And they were, they actually, the warehouse we picked it up from, they did have a lot of wood there. So clearly they, they had, had a wood. bunch. We could have took, yeah, there was yeah. a ton, like three skids of redwood beams and slabs. So for, they're clearly storing wood for some reason. So I am going to tell them in this project because there was no material on my end of the bargain that I have this material left over. My gut tells me they're just going to have me keep it. Um, but I am going to be honest with them because I would like to yeah. work with them again in the yeah. future. But if it was a client where I built a, anything for and I put money in the job and they agreed to it and they paid me for it, which tells me they agreed to it, uh, then I probably would not tell them at all. And that's kind of just how it goes with it. Justin? So if you are <clears throat> buying lumber for a project and you have lumber left over that is your lumber yep so yep. there's no there's no way around it yep. uh obviously if you would have bought the correct amount then you wouldn't have paid as much money so therefore there would have been more money in your pocket so there's no reason to give that lumber back to them no matter what the project is and um 99 percent of the time they're not going to know what to do with it anyway yeah they don't know no. what to do with it yeah they don't like yeah. what are they going to do with a thing of walnut or some redwood they don't know what to do with it it's yeah i mean and they it's don't sit they, in their yard and rot yeah they don't they don't have the tools they don't even they don't even care they don't even know the difference right. so yeah most of the time i'm not even saying anything to them um like these guys have said before it it depends on the project i have done um certain projects that were very 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 profitable and high pro paying projects that if i did have extra lumber then i would make them a cutting board or something you know something extra and when i give when i gave that to that client they were blown away yeah yeah and it adds a lot for Adds sure a lot of value for, for sure the little amount that you put into it for sure and that little amount is going to pay tenfold i promise you exactly so uh not the island project but the walk-in closet project well they'll be they'll definitely be getting a little bit extra added on top of it yeah i think people overthink it because they forget it's it's no different from the the last quarter of a can of finish it's the yep. same thing. It's a consumable. Yep. It's a material used to make the thing. Everyone thinks because it's a physical larger item. It's like, oh, should I tell them? Like, no, it's 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 finish. It's glue. It's whatever. It's a, electricity. It's the same thing. It's a cost of doing business. There's some leftover. That's yep. my margin. Yep. That's it. Yep. For sure. Let's um. Data. Let's jump to let's jump to Josh the dad's question. Yeah. And um. I think we're probably going to call that it for the episode because that's going to be a long one. So let me get to Josh's question real quick. Hey guys, it's Josh the dad. Yep, Josh the dad, one of the big IG coming at you with this week's awesome question. You know, after watching you guys do all your shop upgrades, I'm thinking, wow, I should really think about doing one for mine. So here's my question. When is a time or when is the time to think about installing a centralized dust collection system in your shop or when should you just stick with the old shop vac on a cart and a little bucket on top just kind of curious have a good one talk to you later 
I'm going to jump in real quick first. I think as soon as you got four, me, as soon as you got four inch ports <laughs> on tools, I think you need to start looking at dust collection because it's rated differently. Like it doesn't have the same static pressure as like a shop vac. The reason you have a four inch port is because it needs more CFM, but it doesn't have as much, doesn't mean it needs as much static pressure, like a dust, like a, a shop vac needs or something like that. Like if you have one of those planers with a four inch port on it, like the lunchtop ones or the benchtop, like lunchbox ones, like the Dewalt 735 has a two inch port that like also has a four inch port on it. That one has a blower, so you don't actually need a dust collector necessarily. And I think yeah, you a just lot need of those, a bag on that. You just need a bag. Oh, okay, but, does really well. Yeah, uh, in a rubber band. Um, but no, once you start getting into like drum sanders, you need a dust collector because those things are kicking up a bunch of dangerous dust yeah. into the air. Once you get into, I hate to say it, but he's right. Once you have like a like a cabinet table saw, or even like a, a job, not a job site, but a, a, a construct. Uh, what's the table like the Delta with the open mm-hmm. bottom? Contractor. In between. Contractor saw. Thank you. Contractor the saw. contractor saw where you can actually like install a base on that thing and then jam a, a dust scoop underneath it. You really want to do that because those things are kicking up. The, the blade is spinning in a way that it wants to kick dust up. But if you have some suction pulling down, you're actually going to save your lungs and your clothes and stuff. So I think the the, the table saw is a, like a real table, saw, not a real table saw, a table saw that's a contractor table saw or a, especially a cabinet table saw. There's no reason to not have a cabinet table saw without a dust collector there's no point you're eliminating the point of having a cabinet saw yeah um you get into certain like band saws they start to once you get over a certain size you have to have the dust collector it's really mostly you're going to want to pay attention to the port the dust port that's on those things once you're four inches and up you want to start moving past uh, a shop vac because there's a reason those ports are bigger if you're buying a rubber gasket like flange that goes from two inch to a four inch it's not going to work <laughs> You're not, yeah. that's not, it's like, not what you This do. is an attack <laughs> as well. This is the Dunlap segment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, as soon as you're going from the two inch to the four inch, you're losing the ability for the machine that's attaching to that to do its job. There's a reason there's a four inch port on there. And it also goes the other way. You don't really want to hook up a four inch machine to a two inch port because usually those are set to have a high static pressure like you get out of a shop vac. Uh, there's a reason that they're sized that way generally speaking so that's kind of the time you want to get into it pete uh i i'm a firm believer in everyone listen you can swing a piece of walnut around and hit a dust collector on craigslist mark or facebook marketplace like they're 79 bucks at harbor freight yeah like they're they're cheap like get the get the either the coupon that they mail you or the awp 2020 just tell the uh, clerk they look the nice cost. they'll give you 20 yeah. percent off <laughs> they just give you 20 percent off either get that or look on look they on haven't craigslist had anything nice said to them in weeks or craigslist, All you gotta do is craigslist or facebook marketplace get a dust collector get a four inch out dust collector i have a i got a cheap one a, a penn state industries that's not even a company anymore but it's, it's a not six even inch words out. that make sense yeah exactly penn state <laughs> it's pennsylvania yeah I don't Adrian's know what that is. Mad. Is that a thing? Adrian's going to be so mad. Um, but, you know, I got it for 120 bucks, and I've had two of the same model now fly through my shop, like to other makers, because like I pick, I got a good deal on a bunch of tools, and then I sold them off. It's a decent dust collector. It's got a six inch out, so I have a, a dual four inch coming out of it, and I will never go back. But, don't you know, he, he said a central like dust collection system. Like it makes it think, it makes me think of like, that's what it is. There are coffee There's pipes and stuff. stuff. He, wait, it makes me think of like what you've got. But in reality, what a lot of people can do is like get like one of those like wall mounted units, like the, the bag hanging off of it and going right into it. Something sure. simple for one side of the shop, maybe, and another, a full size unit for handling the majority of your tools. Cause you also don't want to be running an entire shop off of one of those guys. And in reality, like I have my, my joiner is on the opposite side of my everything Listen, else those small dust collectors with the bags that hang off the wall they're 650 cfm but it doesn't last when you get past like three feet of hose or line attached but if you're them. running a 20 foot hose from the other side of the shop it's just as crappy if not worse so you're i know that's what i'm saying you guys you are agreeing can... i'm agreeing you're agreeing with me pete uh, yeah. you're, you're thinking oh. we're arguing but we're agreeing <laughs> 
but basically what I'm saying is like, don't think of it as like one centralized, like you need this one dust collector to run everything. Like a PFLUX would be nice at every shop, but in reality, you can have two or maybe even three if you got a shop big enough. Like Justin's apparently, apparently in a warehouse. I don't know, his shop looks massive. He has a spray room. It's great. Uh, so like you can have two, maybe three even set up around the shop. I know of several accounts of the wall mount that. things you're talking of the about. wall. Well, the wall mounts, but there's usually like a central unit that's a little more dedicated to like the table saw and some other stuff. But don't think of it as like one system. Just start upgrading and then start throwing it in there because it's better than a shop. So when back. should shop you backs, do that? I think is a question, Pete. I, as soon as you get Not what like you said, sorry. <laughs> the, yeah, like you said, when you get tools that take four inch ports, hundred percent get one. Yeah, you can I don't, literally I don't think you have to like wait Pete for said, multiples. You can find, I bought my first one for 125 bucks. It was crap, but it worked. And then you can go to Harbor Freight and get one for 179 bucks. That's a very powerful machine and can probably last you a few years. It's It's not amazing, but it works fine. And it's under 200 bucks and 200 bucks is nothing. I mean, it's not free. I know that that's a lot of money, but 200 bucks for what you're doing is really overall a very inexpensive tool for a wood shop woodworking is very for your lungs and everything it's a small cost entry dan's got nothing uh justin what do you think yeah i've been banned from talking in this segment so (laughs) yeah you're cut off sorry it's fine um yeah i mean pretty much ditto um the only thing i would say i mean i have uh you know central vac system i have a three horsepower that's mounted on the wall and AC ducting and all that stuff. Uh, and I still get dust in my shop. There's dust everywhere. You can never no eliminate a hundred percent of the dust. dust. Yeah, no, I got two air scrubbers. The one thing I would recommend highly is a peak safety power cap. I know that was mentioned, I think last week asking what it was. That's your respirator that is powered with batteries for sure. And magic. Mm. Yeah, that thing has been <laughs> awesome. Now, Fallon has a separate one in the spray booth that she uses. Um, that's a totally different animal versus what I've been using. Um, yeah, kind of control. I have more than. Sorry, Dan. I love you. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> Do we lose Justin? Nope. Nope. Oh, no, okay. he didn't pass okay. it off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dan, I, I, uh, Dan do you have anything to add? I really you don't have anything to add. As much as it pains me to say that Mike and Peter, right? They're what, right. A, what about me? Oh, you're right too. Oh, it's just what's it's his like name? An, it's, it's just an on. I think his name is Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> it's an Jeremy. ongoing bit. <laughs> Listen, um, we actually need to get to Nick's question because it's specific to. To just to Jeremy, yes, specific to Justin, Jeremy. Let's get Nick going. Specific to Jeremy, Jeremy's just question, specific yeah. to Jeremy. And then there's an hold on. I'm trying to figure out what the other one you messaged me about there, Justin. Hold on one second. Hey guys, long time listener, two time caller, one time fill in guest. It's Nick Key, Key Woodworks on the Big MySpace, and I got two questions for you. One for Justin, and one for all of you. So here's the first one to Justin. How was the fire? And the question I have for the rest of y'all is with the release of the newest app for the Apple Watch called Noise, you can actually monitor the decibel levels wherever you are wearing your watch. So I think I'm going to be taking advantage of this since I happen to be an Apple Watch wearer. Wearer? How about user? Whatever. But I'm wondering if you guys would ever use it or a similar tech to monitor the noise levels in your shop and know when you should be wearing protection or when you don't need to, or are you just always going to wear protection regardless? Thanks fellas. Later. Love you. Bye. Pete, I'm going to throw this to you because I'm going to try to find a a clip and you look the least visibly annoyed. Go. (laughs) (laughs) So I actually, this actually brings me to kind of makes me think of the previous question of, uh, have anyone, any one of us ever used a like a ppm like parts per million dust sensor in our shop uh i know uh uh wood whisperer uh, mark spagnola oh, why do i always forget his name um it, he he's big on that he actually measures the parts per million of sawdust that's in the air he's big on respirators big on that you know we're talking about decibels right i know okay. but i'm working it towards that so okay it's it kind of falls into the same camp of like well we we don't really think about it that much it's like oh if i don't see it 
it's fine. Or if like, if my ears don't hurt, if they don't ring after I'm fine. But in reality, any little bit helps, whether you have, uh, even, even if you throw like AirPods into your ears, it's knocking out some of those sound waves that are going into your ears. So I don't use any monitoring apps. Uh, I probably should. I don't have a new Apple watch. I have a series two, so I'll see if it works with that, but it's definitely something. Oh yeah. Way, way to flex Justin. Great. He's got one. Yeah. Well, he's, and he's actually physically flexing now. He's got muscles. I get it. Okay. Yeah. I can lift up people that are like passed up from fires. Okay. I get it. I'll save you. <laughs> I'll save you P if you're burning up in a fire. I appreciate it. Oh, that's you. Manly arms. So sweet. Oh, I know God. CPR too. <laughs> oh, baby. Give me the Heimlich. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Totally different Weird. thing. I know. Your, that's um, your other podcast, Pete. Calm down. <laughs> my, my fans only. only that's fans our only fans. Yeah. Only fans. That's what it was. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's something that we should all kind of think about more. I think technology doesn't come into our shop enough in most shops. If we kind of like our tools are the most tech. Wrap it up. Holy fan. cow, Pete. Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, just joking. <laughs> yes. Like. You should be, we should all be doing this. And I, I, I feel like a hypocrite because I have the access to some of this stuff and I don't use it. Uh, so Mike, what about you? Uh, real quick. I actually saw the notifications for that and shut it off. Um, <laughs> embarrassingly, but I, I did shut it off cause it was annoying, but I am very actively lately trying to, in the last like few months, trying to be very good about PPE and using it. So I've been wearing my earmuffs, like the big three M earmuffs. And I've been using my respirator a lot more. So um, do you guys have anything of, in, of value to throw into this? Because I want to get to one more question. Uh, the, the fire was very hot. And, <laughs> and we... Um, Can you keep it up? Is it... I'm, I'm sorry to say this. We lost a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's solid acting. Solid eight out of four. Sorry, All right. <laughs> I have nothing of value to add. I don't no, wear you don't. Just anger. <laughs> All right. This oh, next oh, one, oh, hold on. I don't Real wear quick. watches. Real quick. I do wear anytime, um, especially milling up lumber, or running the table saw or something. I do wear 3M ear, you know, must their mm -hmm. blue tooth, all that stuff. I do wear those. So I think those work a lot better than the other. Yeah, I agree. They don't, so, those, yeah. 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 yeah Did so, you guys speak up a little bit? I, I can't. <laughs> all right. I'm going to yeah. play this next question from Chris Upchurch pretty sure he's giving a bath to a child at the same time so i'm not sure why he's thinking about us at the time but he has a good question and really is directed towards uh towards jeremy <laughs> from Church Workshop. i have a question for justin uh hey man i'm a firefighter myself and i was interested in what is your takes on building creating a farmhouse or not farmhouse firehouse tables uh, for stations uh we use it um, you know, three meals a day, um, get beat up a lot. Uh, a lot of, you know, spilled drinks and food. We play a lot of dice games on there. And so I wonder if you had any uh, sort of tips on how to build um, really um, strong and stout tables um, and what kind of finishes you would use on top. Um, thanks for your uh, help, man. Take care, guys. Justin, this is for you. Answer it. Well, bath time was good. Sound like it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was having a blast. Um, so uh, we talked about this a little bit in the pre-show. The The kitchen table is uh, the staple of the firehouse. That's where a lot of discussions happen. That's where it's where the, a lot of bonding between. We spend a third of our life with these guys or gals uh, that we you know, work with at the fire department. So a lot of time spends at the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually plan on doing three for our stations here soon. Um, so what I would suggest is live edge slabs because it's the easiest and also some sort of metal base. I think we're going to do um, some sort of like uh, epoxy inlay with our logo and station logo and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the finish, if you can spray it, uh, that's what I would recommend the, uh, the most and conversion varnish, uh, conversion. or just any, any type of varnish is going to be the best. Uh, it's going to get beat up. There's, there's no way around it. You're not going to want to use any type of like penetrating oil or anything like that. Even though I'm a huge fan of Rubio, 
Uh, I don't think that's the right application for that. It's going to get beat to heck. So what I would put on there is something like a total boat Halcyon satin. That's what we just did the 11 foot Perota slab with. Can I ask you before real quick, would sure. you recommend that for an exterior use on this bench? hundred percent. hundred percent. Okay. Yes. I mean, that's what it's for is exterior. Right. It's an it's exterior. U- it's a varnish, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's got, got the UV U- inhibitors and stuff. Okay. For sure. All right. for sure. Uh, one thing with the total boat, uh, if you're going to use the satin, you're going to want to do two coats of gloss and then two coats of satin. If you don't do the gloss beforehand and you just do the satin, it'll make it like almost cloudy because of the satin agent or whatever it is that's in there. Um, so we did two coats of sat or gloss and then did two coats of satin. Two hours between coats? One hour. One hour. Okay. Yep. And you don't. Is that because the satin multiplies and it just becomes cloudy? Yeah. So whatever the satining agent that's in there, it'll make it cloudy. Now they, that's what they recommended. They wanted us to just use the satin, but we weren't, we weren't willing to test it like that. So we did two coats of gloss, two coats of satin came out gorgeous, nice satin finish. Um, another good finish to use is general finish, general finishes, water-based conversion varnish. Um, that's what we'll be using on this, uh, kitchen Island as well. So yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I would spray on any of those. It's going to be the most durable finish for you for sure. Would you, would you recommend like a bar top epoxy or something like super extra durable? Um, or you think that's overkill? Honestly, I don't, I don't have any experience in it, so I'm not going to BS you on it. So I appreciate um, it. Yeah. So spray it, well, varnish. None of us have any experience with firehouse station uh, tables. So why don't we wrap this thing up? Uh, Justin slash Jeremy, thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> no, no, Justin, seriously, thanks for being on the show. Really, man. Thank uh, you. Thank you. For- your name's Jeremy Fallon, right? Just to be, <laughs> I just, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> um but seriously unfollow for- dan unfollow <laughs> anyone that's listening unfollow dan Ooh, on his own <laughs> show <Wow>. boom <laughs> mic drop no um but seriously thanks for coming on and yeah thank you, know, you. really appreciate thank you having on man uh, thank you for having me i appreciate really you guys don't want to get sappy but i'm glad that uh you know i'm glad to have you in the instagram world it's really always sure. good talking to you man so you're good you got a lot of great information for sure so go check out justin if you don't already um I'm looking forward to meeting you in person someday. Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> Get out. Um, <laughs> hey, you know what? Should I bring up the negative review thing? Yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's a guy or gal. We're pretty sure we know who it is. Who's leaving a one-star review every couple weeks <laughs> on the podcast. Under the same account. It's the same account name, yeah, every time. And uh, <laughs> it's is pretty he- funny. Is, are they from Texas? Oh, for sure. Um, Perhaps. <laughs> uh, oh, for sure. Uh, they're leaving a one-star review, and it's it's pretty funny at this point. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, and, but the thing is, is when you leave a one-star review, and then you do it again, you don't get multiple one-star reviews. It removes the first. <laughs> so, uh, it's just kind of funny. This is like the fourth or fifth one, and they're just kind of fun to watch. So thank you to that person. It's really nice to know that uh, you're thinking of us. And that you've made four separate one star reviews about our show. Hey, that's they four think stars. about us a heck of a lot more than we think about that. That's oh, four stars true. total. <laughs> so, well, anyway, it gives us diversity because we've yeah. had nothing but five we've only star had reviews. five star reviews. So, we got to have yeah. one in there eventually. So, he figured out how, more legitimate. Well, this person, I should say, this yeah, individual figured out how to make a one star review and not five star because, like, forever you could only leave five star reviews right yeah yeah and to be fair do. they probably had to pay someone to give them that review number anyway so um the thing <laughs> we've got um we've got uh, we've, somebody anyway. got their feelings hurt okay okay <laughs> we have to be sympathetic to yeah, people like right. this it's only fair. <sighs> yeah i'm sorry no so if anyway you guys want to show that person how to leave a proper review you <laughs> yeah, should do five so star, Seriously, leave a five star i say pete it really does it really does help the show um 
actually, you know, I say it really does, but we don't really know how it does, but we just really we're appreciate just assuming, it. We're assuming, really. We, we're assuming yeah. it does. We think it helps with the ratings on the weekly charts, but we actually don't really know. But it really does help when other people are going to go look at the show and they see, oh, this show has three five-star reviews, but ours has 170. So we really appreciate those one-star rev- or those five-star Algorithms. reviews. Uh, if you could just, it's, it's more work. about... They go in, they go out. Yeah, no one knows how they work. It's more about impressions and first eyes. So if you are a fan of the show, please leave a five-star review. Uh, It really helps a lot for the people who are seeing it for the first time and wanting to check it out. So, um, you know, we're proud to say we constantly, we chart every, every single week. We never fall out of the top uh, double digits and charts ever. We haven't in, in months. So we're really thankful to you guys who listen every week. We know that the downloads is a big part of that. We do know that <laughs> the, the, the charts and stuff are really obscure, but we're really proud, really proud of that. So thank you to everyone who supports us. Thank you to everyone who listens and downloads and checks out the show and shares us. Sharing is the biggest thing. Share us in your stories. Um, we really appreciate that. The people who do that are just amazing. Um, next week, we have like six bl- uh, layover questions that are going to go into next week's folder. <laughs> so um, we we probably don't need a whole net bunch next week, but please don't let that stop you from bringing them in. Get yeah. us the questions and we'll uh, always, it's always good to have a backlog. So we might, we might run into like a dry season where we need more questions. It happens. So we yeah, just... Sometimes around the holidays, like when there's a big family gathering, people get busy and we are still going to yeah. do a show. So send in the questions. If we get a backlog, we get a backlog. So we really we're going to be here on Christmas day. I, I can know, be here not. next week if you want. <laughs> We'll let See you know. There, buddy. Um, we <laughs> thanks, Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill you. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, I think that's it. Thank you to the patrons. Thank you to everyone who listens. Thank you for Justin for being on. Uh, I will mention that you're gonna be on the show every week in perpetuity from now on, just because it's a funny bit now. <laughs> and uh, we really do appreciate your time and getting on here with us. So thank you so thank you. very much. Well, let's call this thing. Before uh, you call it, before you call it, I really want to say. Uh, directly to justin thank you for being on i really appreciate it i do know who you are <laughs> it's just a bit uh, uh, i'm right. very surprised i didn't think you knew who i was <laughs> i know who you are i love you though i love you too buddy there's a bunch of love here seriously <laughs> nothing thanks but guys love. appreciate it's you really All right. weird it's oh pete love you to too make... pete yeah whatever love <laughs> you mike i love you justin all right guys have a good one bye love you bye. long time bye.